The polydrons can be used in so many wonderful ways in the mathematics program. And here we shall show you one or two ways in which we can use the polydrons to deepen the student's conceptual understanding of three-dimensional structures. So let's see how the polydrons, first of all, go together before we look at some of the tasks. Very easy. So for example, I have two pieces. What some people tend to do is to try to push, which is not the recommended way. The recommended way is to put one on the flat surface, lift, and insert. So we have now the two pieces connected. And you can see what happens when we connect them. We can angle them to form parts of a three-dimensional structure. So one problem we can give the student is using the pieces, and we have triangles, we have squares, we have rectangles, we have regular pentagons, we have regular hexagons and a variety of other shapes is what's the simplest possible three-dimensional structure to be, you can make using these pieces. So if I take these three triangles, you can see I can put them together, and you can see I can put, angle them to make a tetrahedron or a triangular pyramid. So this is known as the net, and I can make this into a three-dimensional structure. But this begs another question, because this is a net for a tetrahedron. A related question is, how many different nets for the tetrahedron can you come up with? So this structure will give me one. So let's see, we have four. So is it possible? Will this work? Well, this one clearly will not work. But what if I were now to remove this triangle and now position it here. Would this arrangement work? Well, let's see. Ah, there it goes. So now I have two different nets for this tetrahedron. And the question can be, can you come up with any other nets for a tetrahedron? So let's leave this tetrahedron aside for the moment. This is made from four pieces. One, two, three, four four pieces. So a question can be now, is it possible to make a three-dimensional structure using five pieces? Well, let's see. Here is one. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is an unusual net. You see what three-dimensional structure I can make if I fold this? Well, let's see. I can fold this one like this, and now I have my square-based pyramid. But then this opens up another question. How many different nets for the square base pyramid can I make? Now traditionally, the one that is shown in many textbooks is this one, where we have the square in the center, and we have the triangles radiating around the square. So if I do this, this is the one I think most people are familiar with. Get this one in and get this one in as well. And here we go. So at least we have come up with at least two. And are there any more? So we leave that as a challenge. Let's go back to this one. This one is made all from equilateral triangles. Here's a net. But there's something interesting with this particular three-dimensional structure, something that fascinated the Greeks. This is a regular polyhedron. Regular means all the faces must be regular polygons, and the same number of pieces, see the same number, is coming to each vertex. So we have three triangles at this vertex, three, three, and three. So the question that they posed was, how many different regular polyhedron can you make? So regular means all the faces must be regular, and the same number of pieces coming at the vertex. Now with the polydrons, one can show this very, very easily. So we can see this one. It has three coming at the vertex. Now let's see, can we get one now with one, two, three, four coming at the vertex? Well, let's see. If I were to get four coming at the vertex, I can fold this and make an entire three-dimensional structure. All equilateral triangles, and this one, of course, is the octahedron. 
So I can make a shape, a regular polyhedron, all equilateral triangles with four coming at the vertex. So we can get one with three coming at the vertex, four coming at the vertex. Now what about five coming at the vertex? Well, let's see. We have four coming at the vertex. So let's insert one more and see what happens here. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, I can get five coming at the vertex. And the question is, how many triangles will there be at the end? Well, this is the icosahedron. There'll be 20 equilateral triangles with five coming at the vertex. So, so far we have three regular ones. We have one with three coming at the vertex. That's three coming at the vertex. We can get one with four coming at the vertex. Five coming at the vertex. Well, what happens if you get six coming at the vertex? Well, clearly with six coming at the vertex, there's a problem. We cannot fold it because this central angle is 360 degrees, so we have a plane, so you cannot do it. So we can get three with the triangles. We can get the one with th three coming at the vertex, four coming at the vertex, and five coming at the vertex. Well, let's try the square. Regular. Now this is a net for a cube. Again, this is not the one that one normally sees, but let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I can fold it. There it is, a cube. A nice problem is how many different nets for the cube can you make, but that's a real, another problem. But what the Greeks discovered was, here's a regular polyhedron. We have all squares, and we get three squares coming at the vertex. Now it's clear that we cannot get four coming at the vertex because if I put four at the vertex, I run into a problem. Because once again, we have 90, 90, 90, 90. That is 360 degrees. That's a plane, I cannot fold it. So I can get three with my triangles. I can get one with a square. So the Greek said, well, let's try one more. So let's try my pentagon. So what they did, they took the pentagon, and we know that each angle for the regular pentagon is 108 degrees. So you can put three of them together clearly. You can fold them, and you get three coming to the vertex, and this is a dodecahedron. You can get, take 12 of them, and you can make this wonderful regular polyhedron. Clearly, I cannot put a fourth one in because I don't have space. So I get three from that triangles, I can get one with the square, and I can get one with the regular pentagon. Well, no need to try the regular hexagon. You see what happens, because each angle is 120 degrees. 120 times 3 is 360. This defines a plane so I cannot fold it. So what the Greeks did beautifully was to demonstrate that there are only five of them. They're called the five platonic solids or the five regular solids. We can get the tetrahedron. There it is. We can get the octahedron. There it is. This one is the icosahedron. It takes 20 triangles. We can get the square. And we can get the dodecahedron make if we were to use 12 of these. Just one other related task with these. And you can see what you can begin to play around with. So if I get my square, it is how to design a soccer ball. What shapes are in a soccer ball? And if you think carefully, you'll see that the two shapes in the soccer ball, the hexagons and the pentagon. And the nice problem is how many pentagons are needed to make a soccer ball and how many hexagons are needed to make a soccer ball. So this one actually these pieces actually force you to make the ideal soccer ball.